Uh, this is an overview, a general overview of the ModX content management system. It's a system that we use pretty much exclusively for all of our websites. Uh, we use it for a number of reasons and I'll talk about that throughout this overview. So in my resources tab, I have basically a, the resources tab holds all the pages of the website. So you can see that I've got home, our current programs, uh, audio, which is, in, which is grayed out, who we are, events, contact, Google, Google map is grayed out, slideshow, and page not found. If I look back at my actual site, you'll see here that this corresponds to my menu. And audio is not showing, and Google map is not showing. They're grayed out. So we'll get to that in just a minute. But these are my pages. Now, if I want to move pages around, and this just shows you how easy it is to, to use the system, I just simply drag and drop. So I don't want who we are in this spot anymore. I want it behind the events page or after it. I hold my mouse down on who we are. I drag it down, and you can see this long gray dotted line up here. I let go, and all of a sudden, it's now behind it. And when I refresh my page, Okay, we're gonna we've just put who we are and we're gonna put it behind latest events. When I refresh, it automatically moves. Moving pages around in ModX is absolutely so simple. I can also create levels very easily. Now, this particular demo site does not have drop downs, but if my design or my 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 template allowed for drop down menus, I could create levels of pages and again it's so simple I just simply gra grab the one I want and instead of waiting for the long gray dotted line I hover over the page I want to put it inside so in this case who we are and you'll notice that the little green plus sign shows up I let go and now I've just instantly created a level a hierarchy of menu for my website so now if I refresh my uh, events page will disappear Okay, it's now under who we are. And again, I, if I was doing this on a live site, then I would have a drop down here that said who we are. And I will show you some examples of that uh, a little bit later on. So that's how easy it is. Now, if I want to, I decide I don't want that anymore. I change my mind. I simply grab it, pull it up, go for the dotted line, let go, and it's back to normal again. I can refresh this tree and you can see that it's back to the way it was before. So moving pages around, so simple in Mod X. Let's talk about hiding pages and actually let's talk about getting into what the pages look like when we work on them. So I'm gonna click on audio because this is not a page that we've seen on the home page. And this is what you will see when you click on a page. These are all the settings for the page and the content itself is down below in this nice editor. But let's take a look at this for a second. Here's the template. Again, I can assign any page I want to any number of templates that I've built. So I might have one column, two column, a uh, page with photo gallery, page with calendar. Whatever templates I've built, uh, I can choose it for a page. A page is either published or not. So it's either accessible online or just say you're just working on a page and you don't want to make it live yet. You just keep it unpublished. It has a title, a long title, description. We'll get into those in a second. But I want to go down here and show this checkbox, Hide from Menus. So I can hide the page from the menu by checking this box. If I uncheck it, okay, and I save. Now when I go to refresh, my audio page has now appeared. So it's really easy to create uh, pages and, and this is great and useful for landing pages so you want to promote something you can create landing pages it also often in a website there's a lot of content pages that you need to have displayed and linked to but you don't necessarily want every page in the menu so hiding pages is is really easy and it's a useful thing uh, inside mod X okay so let's look at the rest of the settings here the title is pretty simple. That's the title of the page. It's um, the title tag, if you're familiar with that, for search engine optimization. And it would be this right here at the top of the browser. So that's the title of the web page. It's also what you'll find in this resource tree here. The long title is what we put inside the content area. So that would be this right here. 
Again, we wrap it around H1 tags. It's very important for SEO. And we can change that. So just to show you how that looks. I'm going to refresh. Okay, so this is, again, depending on the design, we can put the long title anywhere we want inside the template. We don't uh, even necessarily have to have one. So if for some reason on a page you don't want one, you can just wipe it out and refresh and it disappears. The description is uh, usually used internally, but it can be used anywhere within the site. So for example, you might have uh, a tagline for a page that you want to come up under the main title. You can certainly put that in there for that page and we could in the template we would put the uh, description right underneath so there's lots of uses for that the resource alias which is right here that is the URL of that particular page so audio is my address for this particular page and the system automatically puts in dot HTML for you again really powerful for search engine optimization the title long title the resource alias, the menu title, which we'll get to in a second, and the uh, content itself can be fully optimized for search engine optimization along with meta tags, which we can put in as well. So Monex is really already built in with some SEO features right from the start. So that's really important as well because we want our sites to be found on search engines. The uh, link attributes we hardly we never use uh, the summary is again is, is something that we can put somewhere on the site if we need to but it's not used that often it's usually internal so you might want to put a little note uh, to your developer your your content editors uh, it might just be a reminder the parent resource we don't uh, use inside here because it's all drag and drop so we pretty much don't show that the menu title, now that is something that often can be used a lot. So let's let's just say that uh, you have a page, if I could spell, if you, you have a page that's uh, got a long title and you don't have space to fit it in the menu. You can change it right here and you'll notice when I refresh Oh, I got to unhide it. See, I had, there we go. Unhide it from the menus. Now we'll come up. So audio menu tiles. So again, another SEO, I can have all of these things matching my keywords and uh, it's really powerful SEO. Or again, I can shorten it. Now if I take it out and there's no um, SEO here, then it automatically pulls from the title tag. So I don't need to have this one in here but if I want to change it, then I will. The menu index, uh, again, we don't use because the drag and drop feature, but that's that you can control it from here as well. And we've already gone through published. Now there's another tab here called page settings. This is more advanced. Most of the time, um, your content managers won't need to use these settings, um, but they are available under certain circumstances if, if we find a need for them. The one that we do show most of the time is the published on uh, and the published unpublished date. That means you can set a page to come onto the website at a certain time and to come off the website at a certain time. And that's really great for timed events. So say you have an event running and you've got a page that talks about that event, but it's only for a period of time, then you can have the page automatically come on, say at midnight, and automatically come off the website when that event is over. So that's that's used quite a bit for uh, any, any event or timed content right, that has a time limit to it. The rest of these uh, pretty much are not shown to the content editors. Um, they're useful mostly for administrators. Now here's our template variable section. 
this is where you would actually find the unique elements for a single page. So I'm going to concentrate on the sidebar content. So here we have, if I go back to my audio page, right now there is no sidebar content in here. There's just a green bar. But I want to put some in. So here I have my sidebar title and my actual sidebar content. So I'm just going to put in here audio sidebar title. Okay, save it, refresh, and now my audio sidebar has gone up above my little green box. Now I'm going to put some content in here, and again, you can see that this is a full editor. So let's just go ahead and uh, this is the content for the audio page sidebar. Save it, and I'll refresh, and there we go. It's appeared on the right. So template variables, again, easy to use. You know, they're just simple text boxes or content boxes. Um, here's a, a, a template variable or a set of template variables that manages a slideshow. Here's a template variable that manages a photo gallery. So there's lots of things that we can do with template variables. And uh, I think you get the point of how they work. Now here's the actual content of the page. And if we take a look at it, you can see, and I've just done this for some examples. Um, we've got all kinds of editing ability inside the content area. And it's really easy to use. It's very similar to Microsoft Office. You've got bold, italic, underline, strike through, sub subscript, superscript, and you can see those in action right there, underline, strike through, bold, italics. We've also got uh, bullets, okay, which you can see there. And we've got numbered lists, so you can have, instead of bullets, you can have numbers. We've got indent, outdent, which pushes the uh, content. Okay, so there's a numbered list. Um, you've got left justify, center, right justify, full justify. Okay, so you've got all the same uh, options that you're used to using. We can also create different styles, and we often do this. So you might have a blue header style. You might have um, different colors, green, blue, different sizes, large, medium, small. You've got all kinds of options for editing the styles. You can also change... Uh, the actual content or format, sorry, of of uh, text by clicking this little double A icon, and here you've got all kinds of options for fonts. You got different options, and we can install more. Uh, you can change the size of the of the text uh, by different parameters. You can change the color. You know, you've got all kinds of color options there. You can change the weight of it, is it bold, you know, how thick is it, is it uppercase, lowercase, sentence case, you can change the background of a, of a, uh, a text, piece of text, there's all kinds of options in here, we won't get into all of them, you can put borders around them, um, you can apply these and you can really learn to make some very uh, interesting looking web pages and content. There's also uh, these options to paste from Word, Microsoft Word, or paste from plain text. You always want to use one of these when you're pasting from Word because Microsoft Word adds hidden code when you paste from Microsoft Word or Excel or PowerPoint or any of those and you paste, try to paste it into a web page, there's actually a lot of hidden code and that hidden code usually messes up the website so it doesn't look the way you think. And so we always paste Microsoft Office content into the web content by using one of these two options. Now we can also add images and um, there's lots of options here. I won't go into them all other than to say I'll just add a quick one here. You click on this little insert edit image button and I need to pay, put my cursor at the beginning of the paragraph that I want to add the image to. 
So I'm going to click this and it comes up with you know some options. If I have a, an image that's sitting on another website, I can just paste in the URL or I can go to my server. So these are files that are sitting on the server and I go to navigate to where my content is. So here's and I've got a content folder and I've got images and I've already uploaded a few of these images. If I wanted to upload more to from my computer to the server, I just simply click this little upload files button and then I add and then I can click uh, and upload any number of photos. I can click, I can upload video, I can upload audio, I can upload photos. Now in this particular case, uh, I want to upload photos because I'm inserting a photo. So then I just choose the one I want and I click insert. Now you're going to see that this is going to be really big. Okay, it's, it takes up the whole size. So I want to resize it. So I click on it, I right click and I choose insert edit image. Okay, so I'm going to edit it this time. I'm going to go to the appearance tab and it's, it's 768 by 768. That's way too big. I'm going to put it down to 250. I hit the tab key and it automatically changes the exact proportion that I want. So now when I hit update, there it is. Now it's a lot smaller. Now you'll notice that the text is snug to it. It's down at the bottom. I want to give it some uh, space and I want the text to flow around. So again, I right click and do insert edit image and go back to the appearance tab. And now this time I'm going to set the alignment to left. And you can see the little picture changes here to show you what it's going to look like. I'm going to give it some space. Okay, so I want to give it some horizontal space, which will put it to the right and the left. Okay, and you can see that it pushes out, give it, gives it some nice space. And I'll put a little space at the top and the bottom. I could also give it a border if I want. Hit update. Okay. And there I've flowed the text around the outside. Now let's go take a look at it and see what, see what it looks like. Refresh. And there it is. A nice image with a nice little border, some space, and the text wrapped around it. So it's quite easy to add images to the website. We can also create links to other pages or to other websites. So if I want to take this text and I want to create a link, very simply, I just click on the little chain icon. And here I can plug in my, um, my website. And I can choose it to open in this window, open in a new window, which is usually a great idea when you're linking to an external page. So if I click that, now it's going to link to bridgecourt.com. Let's take a look. Okay, and it opens up, and there it is, bridgecourt.com. I can also link internally to another page inside my website, and it's so easy to do. I just highlight the text. Click the little insert uh, edit link, the chain, and where it says search here, I just start typing. I want to uh, give it uh, a link to the Who We Are page. So if you look over here, Who We Are page, I can just start typing Who, and it will automatically search for the pages within my website and give me whatever options are based on what I'm typing. I just simply click on it, and it automatically puts in the appropriate code. That's all I have to do. Hit insert, and it's going to add it to it. So now when I refresh, there it is, it goes to the Who We Are page. So that's uh, inserting links, very simple. There's more to it than that, but that's very simply how you do that. Uh, you can add video, okay, so there you can embed video right into the web page. So let's, clear, let's actually go to a page that has a little more space, like the Who We Are page or the events page. Okay, so I want to embed a video here, and I click on the little insert, edit, embed video. I choose the type of video that I want, that I've uploaded, and I have to know the size ahead of time. So you put in the dimensions here, and then I click on, well, you can, you can embed it from an address, if you have it on a different server or a different website 
or again you can browse to the what's called the Modix browser which we've seen before so I've got uh, a video right here called dunk tank there's lots of other options here uh, that you can do we won't get into all of those but I'll just insert this and save it and that's in the latest events page and so here you can see here's my my video right here and it's already set to, to pre-play and it embeds it right in and again I can change the size if I want okay change the size and there it is bigger so there's uh, lots of options for content now this isn't showing on here we're doing some testing but this would show up as a box with a little icon that shows that it's embedded video you can uh, clean up messy code so if you've got code that isn't working properly you can you can clean it up we we recommend that you remove formatting which is a lot easier so if, if you've got say for example this is bolded text and I want to get rid of the bold I just simply click the little eraser type thing here icon and it removes the bold and f so for whatever you've got uh, that you want to clean up you can use that toggle editor means I can actually see the code so if you're embedding something with other code or you have some knowledge of code and then you can always go in and see the code at any time so that's an over very quick overview of content and page content within mod x again the power comes in template variables access permissions again if you were having different departments or different divisions then administrator could set up pages that are specific only to those departments or divisions and that's all they would see so that's a real quick overview of the document settings. So that's it for the ModX overview. So much more we could say, but uh, that gives you a quick overview of how easy it is to manage content, how flexible the system is, and how the sky's the limit as far as what you want to do with your website.